Hi there, welcome back to Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video, the goal is to learn how to balance chemical equations and to get some practice so that by the time you get to the end of this video, you can balance some chemical equations on your own and have some confidence in doing that. By the way, I'd like to welcome you to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard, and I'd like you to take a look around at the playlists. That's where the action is. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you don't miss a thing. This is the place for all things honors chemistry and AP chemistry. Now, back to the video here, when we take a look at a typical chemical equation, in fact, this is one that maybe we've written before already, you might notice that in this synthesis reaction, we have two reactants, sodium and chlorine, that are reacting to form sodium chloride. And this looks like a very fine chemical reaction. This is a reaction that we can carry out in the lab fairly simply, but there's a little problem here, or at least there's a problem with the way we have this equation written. You might notice that on the reactant side, which is the left side of the arrow, we have two chlorine atoms right there, and that's represented by the fact that there's a two right here as the subscript for Cl. On the product side of the reaction though, notice that we only have one chlorine atom. So I suppose the question is, what happened to the other chlorine atom? Did it get destroyed? Did it somehow disappear? Well, we know that's not possible because there's this thing in chemistry called the law of conservation of mass. And that law of conservation of mass tells us that we cannot create or destroy any mass or we cannot create or destroy any atoms in any chemical process. So there's something wrong with the way we have this equation written as it stands. What we're going to have to do is balance this chemical equation. And the goal of this is to make sure that we have the same number of chlorine atoms on the left side as we have on the right side. And we're going to have to do the same thing for sodium to make sure that we have the same number of sodium atoms on the left side as we have on the right side. So let's start with the chlorines here. Now the way I do this is I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 right here in front of the NaCl. That way I can multiply everything in the NaCl by 2. So I now have two chlorine atoms on the right side and I have two chlorine atoms on the left side. So the chlorine atoms are balanced. That's good. But you might notice that by balancing the chlorine atoms, I've also messed up the number of sodium atoms I have because we had one on the left side, but we now have two on the right side. So to balance that, I'm going to have to put a coefficient of two in front of the sodium right here. And now we have a balanced equation. So once again, the goal here is to place coefficients in front of these substances such that the number of atoms of an element on the left side is the same as the number of atoms of that element on the right side. Now let's try another example, one that might be a bit more complex. Here we have a decomposition reaction. We have gallium oxide that's decomposing into gallium metal and oxygen gas. Now Let's take a look at the oxygen atoms here. I have three on the left side and two oxygens on the right side. Now what can I do in order to bump those values up so that I have the same number of oxygen atoms on both sides? Well, you might realize that if we multiply the number three by two and we multiply the number two by three, we're going to have a total of six oxygen atoms on both sides. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to multiply the oxygens on the left side by 2 and the ones on the right side by 3. So now I have six oxygen atoms on both sides. Sometimes I have to do that using the, I think in math that's called the least common multiple. I have to bump those numbers up so that they're going to be equal. Now that my oxygens are balanced, let's take a look at the gallium atoms. On the left side, I have four gallium atoms. I had two, but the fact that there's a coefficient of two out in front multiplies that by two. So I have four galliums on the left side. On the right side, I have only one. So in order to balance out the galliums, I have to put a coefficient of four right here so that now I have four gallium atoms on both sides and of course six oxygen. So this is a balanced equation as it stands. So two, four, and three are my coefficients 
for that equation. Now let's take a look at another type of reaction. Let's look at a single replacement reaction here. Now sometimes when students see the parentheses and polyatomic ions and all that, they get a little bit concerned. They think it's a little bit confusing. To be honest, in a single replacement reaction or a double replacement reaction, I would strongly recommend that you treat a polyatomic ion like it were its own little unit. Like for example, on the right side, I would treat this SO4 like its own little entity there. And the fact that there's a three right here tells me that we have three of those sulfate ions. Now on the left side, I only have one sulfate ion. So let's balance that. Now if I multiply FeSO4 by three like this, now I've balanced the SO4 ions. I don't have to worry about, you know, multiplying the four by three and the, the S's, just treat the SO4 like it's its own entity. And very often that's actually a very good uh, method to simplify things. Now let's take a look at the iron atoms. We've uh, changed that around here. It looks like we have three iron atoms on the left side and only one iron atom on the right side. So to balance that, I'm going to multiply this Fe by three, just like this. Now lastly, let's take a look at the aluminum atoms. I have one aluminum on the left side and two aluminums on the right side. So to balance that out, I have to multiply the aluminum on the left side by two. So putting a two right there is going to balance the equation completely. So now I have my overall balanced equation. So my coefficients are two, three, three. And of course there's understood to be a one right here, even though we don't write that one, of course. Now let's try another one. This next reaction might be a bit more complex than any of these that we've done so far. We have another reaction with gallium being added to hydrochloric acid, and the products are hydrogen gas and gallium chloride. Now let's take a look at the chlorine atoms first. I see that we have one chlorine atom on the left side versus three chlorine atoms on the right side. So to balance the chlorines, we're gonna to have to multiply the one on the left side by three. So I put a three right here. So my chlorines are balanced. Now let's take a look at the hydrogen atoms. I have three hydrogen atoms on the left side and two hydrogen atoms on the right side. So there's that two, three split again. So you might remember that Whenever we have a two versus three, the best way to fix that is to bump them both up to six. Now to do that, I have to multiply the H2 by three, and I have to change this three on the left side to a six, so I have to do this. Now, this does not mean that the first time that we put that three there that we made a mistake. Sometimes you just have to do that. Sometimes you have to uh, write down a coefficient and then you change the coefficient. That's normal. And so don't feel that you made a mistake. That's just normal whenever you balance these equations sometimes. So the hydrogens are balanced. Now, you might notice that by balancing the hydrogens, we've uh, messed up our chlorines that we started with. We had the chlorines balanced, but they're not balanced anymore because we now have six chlorines on the left side and three chlorines on the right side. So how do we balance that? Well, we have to multiply the one on the right side by two, just like this. So now we have the chlorines balanced again. And finally, we can balance the gallium atoms. I see one gallium atom over here on the left and two over here on the right. So to balance the galliums, I need to multiply the one on the left side by two, just like this. So now we have an overall balanced equation. Our coefficients are two, six, three, and two. So here's a good example of an equation where sometimes we have to jump back and forth, change those coefficients, and uh, perhaps even balance an element more than once in order to make it work. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a combustion reaction. We have some C2H6 being reacted with O2, and we produce CO2 and water. Now for a combustion reaction, I would strongly recommend that you balance the elements in this order. Carbon first, hydrogen next, and oxygen last. Now the reason I say balance oxygen last is that oxygen is split up on the product side by a plus sign. Anytime you have an element like this that's split up 
between two different substances. Personally, I find it's best to balance that element last. So let's try with the carbons first. We have two carbons on the left and one carbon on the right. So I'm going to multiply this carbon dioxide by two, just like this. Next, we have our hydrogens. I have six hydrogens on the left side and only two hydrogens on the right side. So what number times two equals six? Well, it is three. So I'm gonna put a three right here in front of water. Now, let's balance the oxygen atoms last. We have two oxygen atoms on the left side, right here. And on the right side, how many do we have? Be careful here. We have actually a total of seven oxygen atoms. Do you see seven? Because two times two here is four, plus these other three that are in the water. So that's seven oxygen atoms total. So we have seven on the right, two on the left. Now, what number times two equals seven to balance that out? Well, you might think, well, I suppose we could say seven halves like this, and that would be good. The problem is, in an overall balanced equation, we can't have fractional coefficients. We have to have the uh, lowest whole number ratio of coefficients. And so in order to fix that, I'm going to take all of these coefficients, the, the one that's understood to be here, and the seven halves, and the two, and the three, and I'm going to multiply them all by two. So when I do that, I get rid of the fraction. So here is my new lowest whole number ratio, two, seven, four, and six. And so if we double check ourselves, you'll see that yes, indeed, this is a balanced equation. We have four carbon atoms on both sides. We have 12 hydrogen atoms on both sides. And we have 14 oxygen atoms on both sides as well. Now, let's try another example. Let's balance this equation. Now here we have an equation that does not fit in very conveniently with our five types of reactions that we learned in the last video, but that's okay. Some reactions don't fit in quite as well. But here we have NH3, which is called ammonia, and we're reacting that with copper two oxide to make some nitrogen gas, water, and copper metal. So let's start with the hydrogens here, because I see one of those three, two splits again. Do you see a three and a two? So how do we fix that? Well, we multiply the one on the left side by two and the one on the right side by three to make six hydrogens. So I'm gonna do something like this. So my hydrogens are balanced now. Let's take a look at the oxygens. I have one oxygen atom on the left side and I have a total of three oxygen atoms on the right side, three times one. So to balance those oxygens, I'm going to have to multiply that CuO on the left side by three, just like this. So now my oxygens are balanced. Let's take a look at the copper atoms because those seem to be uh, unbalanced. We have three copper atoms on the left side here and only one copper atom on the right side. So to balance that, I'm going to multiply the copper atom on the right by three, just like this. And now if I'm not mistaken, I believe everything is balanced here because I see two nitrogens on both sides. So those kind of balance themselves out. I have six hydrogens on both sides. That's good. I have three copper atoms and I have three oxygen atoms on both sides. So yes, this is a balanced equation. Hey, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please slam that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. That helps get the algorithm going and helps recommend my videos to other great students like you. Now, in our next video, we're gonna do another topic that's a bit more advanced. We're going to learn how to predict the products of certain types of chemical reactions. That's a tougher one, I hope you'll join me for that video very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.